We're out of time. Yeah. Well, well, we're just gonna have to cut something out of the middle. <laughs> <laughs> On this show, that's not gonna be hard to do. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. bunch we have here tonight. It is a what very is noisy bunch, and they laughed at Big Al's jokes, so either they've been waiting a long time or they're drunk. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I'm it not would, quite it sure. It would help for them to be drunk. I know. <laughs> oh, Barbara, you got a lot of cleavage tonight. I like that. <laughs> nice. Well, I have to let you know that I read in the newspaper a very interesting article about cleavage. And did you know that cleavage An makes people... An article about cleavage. Yes, it makes people live longer. Really? It does. It makes people live longer. I read this and I had to pull it out of the newspaper because I know that you are definitely a cleavage person. It says, cleavage cure-all. Looking at sexy gals add years to guy's life. Does it? There is a Dr. Maxwell Comarty, who's an authority on aging, and he says that any form of sexual excitement is great for blood circulation. And he says, looking at large breasts makes men healthier and even adds years to their lives. It says in a control, control study involving over 250 men from 55 to 75, <laughs> men that looked at big breasts had more life expectancy than men that didn't, and it was even beat out daily 30-minute workouts. Okay. All right. No. No. I think that so makes now, sense. right. So now that what are you, seventy one? I'm yeah, almost seventy two. See? I'm old. And you're a boob man. I'm old, yes. And that's the key to longevity. Yes. So I think that all the plastic surgeons out there should be very excited about this. You know, most of most of my friends are like eighty and ninety. Really? Yeah, and they're all boob men, too, you know. Come to, come, come what to are we making tonight? We're making, uh, what are we making? We're making uh, chicken stroganoff. Chicken stroganoff. Yes. And speaking of breasts, you have chicken breasts there. Yes, yes. I think we've, I think we've talked about breasts enough. Uh, now, uh, first, uh, put, put the fire under that pan on the right, the one that's under the camera. This one? This one, that, okay. that one, yes. yes. Right from Ferner. Yes. Um, you, you know, what? this is a great dish. I made it yesterday afternoon. Excuse I, me. I had it last night. Yes. There's no flame. There's no flame. Oh, we got to turn the gas on. Uh oh. We got to turn the gas on. But now on. I just had the, the thing on. Is that going to blow up again? I'm going to move back. It might. It might. It Go might. for it. It might. It might. All right. We All right. haven't had a good fire in a couple of years. You know, that flame was on earlier this afternoon, and I turned it off because uh, I didn't want to waste all the gas, you know? You know, for the first couple of years of our show, he had no hair on his arms. <laughs> all right, all right. In all right. fact, there was, a, like, a real chef that visited us once, and he told me that chefs always cook with long sleeves for precisely that reason. Your nose is running. <laughs> My nose always runs, Barbara, you know that. It always runs. Well, make sure you wash your hands. Boy, you know, I was, yes, yesterday I was watching a cooking show. Uh -huh. It was on the, on the, uh, the uh, Discovery Channel. 
and it was a very famous chef, you know, that, that, that really in a hotel or something, and he was making something, and he put his hand up, he'd go, <laughs> and then he'd reach over and grab some stuff and threw it in the pot. Uh, yeah. Gosh, well, you know what? If you, we were saying this before, if you knew what happened in most restaurant kitchens, you probably wouldn't eat there. You sure wouldn't. And I mean, look, people see what happens in our kitchen, and they still eat with us. Not very many. <laughs> Can no. I, can I, what am I going to put, you know what, there's all kinds of stuff in this pan. I think it's left over from the last show. No. What's all that white speckly stuff? That's Is it paint? Stuff. No, that's just stuff. Oh, just stuff. All right. Well, what's for me to stir? Nothing. Well, there will be in just a minute. We've got to put some, put some, uh, some oil and some, some butter and stuff in there. And, hey, this is kind of a neat thing right here, you know? What is that? This is, this is, this is margarine. It's butter. And we just put it in like this. Looks like a, looks like a parrot. <laughs> Oh, that's that. I can't believe it's butter. You know, Fabio does those commercials. You know Fabio? Fabio, no. Yes, he's that guy with the long hair and the big muscles. No. Fabio. Yes. Never, never heard of him. Really? No. 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 So you mix oil and butter? Yes. That's okay. what the recipe says. We've got a recipe here somewhere. See, they do this on real cooking shows. Here you go, Barbara, right here. We lost our red spoon. We're making chicken stroganoff. That was our cameraman, Al. He wanted to know what we were making. Obviously, he's not paying attention. <laughs> Didn't we say we were making chicken stroganoff? I don't know. Did we? Yeah. OK, OK. You know, we've got a very interesting audience tonight. You Do know we? Stan, the trash man, my husband? Yes. Well, his trash convention is in, uh, <laughs> is in town. Trash convention? Yes. Yes. What, what would trash people have to convene about? <laughs> oh. oh. Well, no, you seriously. know, it's a trashy group. I mean, they talk about rubbish. Kind of like you and me. What? No, really, what, what do they say about rubbish? I... Well, they talk about recycling. And um, I don't know, they play golf. Yeah. The whole thing is probably deductible, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So as far as, you know, as part of their entertainment... Barbara, why aren't you stirring? Okay, sorry. But you know what? This is starting to crackle and get in my... You know what? This is getting... It's crackling. I have to put frying glasses on. Okay. Now I'm ready. <laughs> Well, you don't want this stuff to splash in your eye. So I have frying glasses. This is just safety. How's it going? Oh, turn the fire down, Barbara. That's turn the fire down. Turn it down. Oh, yeah, you're burning the onions. OK, so now turn when the, the onions down. become crispy looking, what does yeah. that mean? It means uh, maybe you better take it, off the, take it off the thing for just a second here so we can put the mushrooms on. OK. I've got to slice all these mushrooms. It just okay. takes a long time. You know what? On real cooking shows, they would have done that before. Yeah, but then we wouldn't have anything to do. Oh. <laughs> okay, so calm down. Oh, I have to, I have to, have to show you this. This was the cutest thing that, um, where is it? All right, while you're doing that, I'll put the mushrooms in, okay? okay. Oh, this is just right. This is just right. It's How do you good. know it's, it's just good. right? You don't looking even good. have a recipe. Looking good. I got it right in front of me over there. Oh, boy. Now you're supposed to stir. Oh, okay. But you can read and stir, can't you? Yes, I can time. read and stir. Thought, okay. You know, so. we have this ongoing conversation, him and I, about um, HMBs. And HMBs are high maintenance beauties. And, and I know a lot of my friends are married to HMBs. Well, there was this lady, she sent this to me. She goes, I watch your show religiously and hear John make comments about how high maintenance you are. Well, I cut this article out of the National Enquirer for you to show him that you're not so bad. Every husband in Orange County should get down on their knees and be thankful that they're not married to a real princess. Get down on their knees and do what? And be thankful that they're not married to a real princess. 
And what this gal did was she cut out, it says, a life to die for, what it costs to live like a princess. And this was in the National Enquirer. And it tells you what princess die spends. Oh, here, I'll get a shot of that. I love my picture taken. This is what Princess Di spends on a monthly basis just to maintain herself, okay? She's, monthly, not, she's, she's not very pretty. <laughs> yes, she is. Sure, Barbara. Okay, monthly hair lightening, $5,400, okay? For the year, in clothes, hats, and accessories, $72,000. Four weekly visits to the hairdresser, $41,000. Well, I'd like to be your hairdresser. <laughs> and then it says, therapy twice a week, $15,000. I'd like to be your therapist. <laughs> Go on. So I am just, I am just, um, here, monthly non-surgical facelifts, $825. You know, Barbara, what I think? What? I think she's getting screwed. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Boy, that's terrible. Well, now, see? Now, put all this stuff in there. Oh, okay, so you, we're moving the you, stuff from here to here. Can you lift that pan? Yeah, sure. She's strong. Strong like boots. Well, you know what? I work out. Yeah. I have a personal trainer, you know. Yes. My personal yoga yeah. trainer. The one that lays on top of you. He doesn't no. lay on top of me. I know. He does not. I know. I know all about that. I heard it. when you were telling your girlfriend about it. Barbara was telling her girlfriend from Nashville how this trainer lays on top of her and it's even tell you anything. He, oh, more butter. Let yes. this like slide right through yes. you. <laughs> we, we, got, we, we got a little more oil too. Oh, this is a terrific dish. Really? Have yes. you made this before? I made it yesterday afternoon. I, I said that once. I ate it last night for dinner and I ate it again tonight. And it's better the second night. Really? Yeah. Aren't you sick of it? No. No, it's well, you know, you better stop experimenting on yourself. You've already had one quadruple bypass this year. Yeah, but that was smoking too many Pall Mall cigarettes. Think so? Yes. Yes. How's it going in cardiac rehab? No, we're, no it's good. Fine. Yeah? Yeah. We get, uh, we get a couple new people in there every week. They're scared to death. They just got off the operating table. They're still, they're still bleeding, and they put them on a bike and go on the pedal. <laughs> All right. Every time he Stir. comes back from cardiac rehab, he has like a joke that he tells me. And what was the joke last week? Okay, what's the difference between a dog at the front door and a woman at the back door? Well, that's not really a joke. That's just the way it is. This, <laughs> this. This, what, it, what, the, if there's a dog at the back door and he's screeching and hollering and barking and yipping and, uh, and, a, and a woman at the front door and she's hollering and screaming and banging on the door, you know what the difference is? Uh -huh. When you let the dog in, he'll shut up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we got we got to put some flour in there. Now, you got to stir a lot now. Wait, flour? Yes. You know what? Were you supposed to bread this chicken? Stir. And did you make a mistake, stir. and are you trying to cover up? Stir, 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 stir. <laughs> no. no, I'll tell you, I did, I did because I, I used the uh, plastic bag when I made it yesterday, and it's a lot of, uh, stir, Barbara. <laughs> Damn. So Boy. if you're making this at home, stir. what you would have done is Put the flour no, in no, the plastic don't. bag and the chicken. No, because you can't get the flour, get, get the chicken out of the bag. It takes too long. Stir, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what happens if, like, food goes down there? It stays forever. It's good. good. 
It's get, you get some moldy and then you breathe the, the stuff that comes off the mold and you die. I saw that on television last night about that mold in your, in your home. Did you see that? That's pretty, that's pretty scary. You know what else I saw on television? Stir, did you Barbara. see about that orgasm Barbara, pill? Barbara, you're not stirring. No, did you say that? I'm not kidding. Barbara, on the news last Barbara, night. Barbara, you're not stirring. I am stirring. My arm's getting tired. Um, there was this, there's this orgasm pill that they're working on for women, but they, but they are experimenting with it. And the, they asked this lady on TV what she thought of it, and she said, well, then if people were taking it, no this one would ever broth. get anything done. <laughs> this is one cup of chicken broth. You think those will really sell, Barbara? Orgasm pills? I don't know. I, I think that like we make the world happier. <laughs> Remember the movie a few years back with the Woody Allen where they had the like a phone booth, and they called it an orgasmatron. That's right. And you got in there and you pushed the button and woo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, this thickened up. Look at this. Yeah. Now we got to put in a tablespoonful of. It's bubbling. Looks like toxic Dijon. waste. Oh, turn the fire down again. This turn the fire down. Tablespoon of, of Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard. Stir. This is very beige, you know. Stir. Needs to have some color to it. Whoa, that was a little strong. <laughs> My eyelashes are curling on that one. So this is another heart smart dish, I see. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And then a tablespoon full of paprika. Paprika is kind of hot. Yeah? Are you sure that's paprika? Yes, that's paprika. The last time a recipe called for paprika, you put it in and realized that it was hot pepper. Chili powder? And I let did me not. tell you, Barbara, you that was a butt burner. Stir. <laughs> Barbara's telling stories now. I never did that. That's never. the truth. I have the videotape to prove it. Boy, I, I, feel, I feel sorry for poor old Stan. You've got to put up with this all the time. <laughs> all right, a quarter teaspoonful of pepper. Well, Stan is very happy sure. that I have a job. This is the longest job I've ever had, you know. Consistently, that is. <laughs> oh, salt. Stir. Okay, I'm stirring. I don't, what was, I don't know if this is right. What happens right. when it sticks to the bottom of the pan? That, that means the fire is too hot. Oh, okay. So lower it down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep stirring. I'm stirring. Boy. You know, I'm glad right. to see that your sneakers are all in one piece. The other day, no. we went to Coco's for lunch, and he walks outside, and I realized that he cut a hole in his sneaker with a scissor. So, so his little toe could have... Room. No. <laughs> now we want to put all of this in that pan over there. And I was wondering, what are people looking at? And then I look down and I see that he's got these black sneakers with this hole he cut out. Barbara. And white socks. Barbara, now we got to put, we got to put this in this pan here. Now move that pan over here. Here, here I'll get this. Where? It's kind of heavy like that. Don't confuse me. All right. And, and so he, he's walking around with these shoes that he cut up. And what are you doing? He goes, well, my feet were hurting. And so he just cut his shoes up. Now you got to stir that. I had gout. Still have it. Was that it? Was yes. that your problem? Gout, yes. Well, that was certainly not a fashion statement, let me tell you. Oh, you know those shoes I bought at, at Nordstrom's yeah. the, other night, the other day? Uh-huh. When we were there? Yeah. Got to take them back. Why? Well, the right, the right shoe fits, but the... What happened to our silverware? Something... Hey, we've been robbed. <laughs> we sure have. All of, our, all of our silverware is gone. The whole thing. Knives and forks, spoons, everything. Now, really? Stir, bar stir, Barbara. Okay, what is this? This is sour cream. Sour cream. Oh, sour just cream. slap this on your thighs. <laughs> so what you're saying, the shoes that we bought in Nordstrom's the other day. The, the, right, the right one is fine, but the left one is way too small. You know what? I knew I shouldn't have left you alone. I left him alone in the shoe department because I figured, okay, how hard could this be? And I went to the makeup department. And I knew I should have sat there with you and made you try both shoes on. You can't believe the makeup this woman buys. Oh. <laughs> what do you do with all that? Well, I mean, it's part of my HMB-ness. Oh, 
that's looking good. Is that looking, that's good? looking good? I think we're going to put a little more, uh, a little more. Uh, what? Uh, what is this stuff here? Chicken broth. Okay. Okay. Ooh, it got on me. The last time stuff. <laughs> Hey, don't laugh. The last time stuff got on me, it ate a hole through my clothes. <laughs> it was okay. some pretty scary stuff. But anyhow, we got to go back to Nordstrom's. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, we can go back there again. But then how, so you're just going to tell them that one shoe fits and one shoe doesn't? Yeah. That's the way it is. Because the ones I bought before, remember, the same kind of shoes? Yeah. They fit good. Well, didn't you try both shoes on? No. You just tried one shoe. Obviously, the one that fits you, you tried on. That's right, yes. Well, I shouldn't have left you unsupervised. That lady was talking me into these different color lipsticks, and you can sell me anything, you know? She come back with a bag of stuff, <laughs> a great big bag of stuff. What was all that stuff? Oh, it was different kinds of spring blushes, and um, your nose is running again. Oh, is it? Okay. And um, <laughs> lipstick right. and eyeshadows. Right. Oh, it was just wonderful. See, I've got my, I've got my uh, Kleenex box here with my nose on it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, I cut this out of the newspaper for you. I thought you would get such a hysterical thing. If you watch our show regularly, you know that I'm obsessed with personal ads. I love to read personal ads. In fact, remember that time I took a personal ad out for my mom and I didn't tell her? And then some man um, answered it, and so I talked to him for a while, and then, I had, and then he wanted to meet my mom, and I told my mom, and she was really mad. And then I had to tell the man that she couldn't meet him. And I promised not to do that again. And then I took one out for my friend Louie, remember? And I wrote, Prince of Passion, looking for a princess. Oh, boy. And then that lady showed up naked to lunch. He was mad at me, too. <laughs> it was. Where's my personal ads? Well, anyway, I just found the best personal ads the other day. And one of them was so hysterical. This girl wrote, buxom blonde, blue eyes, looking for, here it is. Buxom blonde, blue eyes, looking for marriage-minded millionaire with a bad heart. <laughs> Is that truth in advertising or what? That's good. All right. Listen to this one. Tarzan, lonely in jungle, need fat old Jane, likes wrinkles and white hair, no like them skinny Janes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. I guess, you know, I think we got everything in there tonight. Do we? That's rare. <laughs> that is. We usually forget something. Um, I don't think this is right. What? Should pasta foam? That pasta foam. Is. Oh, okay. That's foaming pasta. Oh, that's foaming pasta. Yeah. Okay. Uglier than a bucket of rattlesnakes. I'm bow-legged and chew tobacco. But I take my hat off at the dinner table. If you can bake a pie and kiss this ugly face, I want to hear from you. Oh, hard. <laughs> Where do you get that stuff, Barbara? This is from the National Examiner. Seeking a good-looking woman with a new tractor. <laughs> This is cute. Do you enjoy wind in your hair and bugs in your teeth? Come ride with me on my motorcycle. <laughs> Look at this. Glory hallelujah. Lonely Christian woman has not found glory hallelujah in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> see, I love these things. I love these things. I want to see who, who writes back to them. When I took the one out for Louie, though, he did get some bizarre women. I think it was that Prince of Passion thing. I wrote, Prince of Passion, Anything Goes, and that was where my mistake was. I haven't seen Louie for a long time. Where is Louie? <laughs> <laughs> he moved to San Francisco. That's a, that's a good place for him. <laughs> the bell rang, Barbara. Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Well, that looks pretty good. Now, this was a half a pound of uh, noodles, egg noodles. Okay, half a pound of egg noodles. Yes, 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 yes. I think that'd be fine. You just put it right back where it was. Had a girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, where should I put this? We're going to put that right on top of this. Right on top of it, yes, not yes. on the side as a decoration. No, right on top. 
Well, put it on our camera here so you can yeah. see it on our sky you can set cam. Set it down right there. Get in front. Turn the gas off over there. How do I turn the gas off? Ooh, that's heavy. This is heavy. Boy, this is heavy. <laughs> I don't think I turned the gas off. You're gonna have to hold that up, Barbara. It's too heavy for me. I'm old. Oop. Over here. Yeah. See, that's why you should cook with a friend. Yes. <laughs> little, lift it up a little higher, Barbara. Atta girl. Oh, this stuff is so good. Oh boy. See, you don't need that orgasm pill. You just need. He gets so excited over his own cooking. It's like, oh, oh yes, oh yes. 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 That's right. I mean, if we were on radio, what would people think we were doing? When, when you get my age, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're gonna put some, uh, put some, put some. Uh, I'll let oh, Barbie do this. Parsley, like they do at Denny's. Yes, yes. All around the outside. All around the outside. Atta, atta yes, look at that. Little trees. Now don't overdo it, Barbara. Okay, we don't want to overdo anything. We're into yes, moderation we here. And then, look, we can take this big one and plant it right no, in no, the middle. <laughs> I think we overdid it a little bit. Oh, it. that's okay. I'll put it on the camera. That's it. Another successful right dish. We're out of here. All right. yeah.